Welcome to IT Partshala. This video is the fifth part of HTML module. Before you continue, you should have studied the earlier parts of this module. Please visit our video library at www.itpartshala.com. In this video, we shall demonstrate the various CSS properties, models, grouping and nesting selectors. Background color. The background color property specifies the background color of an element. The background color of a page is defined in the body selector. Let's look at an example. Background image. The background image property specifies an image to use as the background of an element. By default, the image is repeated so it covers the entire element. Let's take a look at an example. Background image. Repeat horizontally or vertically. Using background image property, you can set if an image set as a background of an element is to repeat horizontally or vertically on the screen. By default, the background image property repeats an image both horizontally and vertically. Here is the format to use background image property. Setting the value as repeat x would repeat an image horizontally and setting the value as repeat y repeats an image vertically. Let's take an example. Background image. Set position and no repeat. Showing an image only once is specified by the background repeat property. Let's take a look at an example. Background shorthand property. As you can see from the examples above, there are many properties to consider when dealing with backgrounds. However, in order to shorten the code, you may specify all the properties in one single property and this is called a shorthand property. The shorthand property for background is simply background. Let's take an example. CSS box model. In CSS, the term box model is used when we talk about design and layout. The CSS box model is essentially a box that wraps around HTML elements and it consists of margins, borders, padding and the actual content. The box model allows us to place border around elements and space elements in relation to other elements. In order to set the width and height of an element correctly in all browsers, you must know how the box model works. Following image illustrates the box model. Margin. Clears an area around the border. The margin does not have a background color. It is completely transparent. Border. A border that goes around the padding and content. Border is affected by the background color of the box. Padding. Clears an area around the content. The padding is affected by the background color of the box. Content. The content of the box where text and images appear. Width and height of an element. When you set the width and height properties of an element with CSS, you can just set the width and height of the content area. To calculate the full size of an element, you must also add the padding, borders and margins. The total width and height of an element should be calculated as shown in the following example. The total element width equals to width plus left padding plus right padding plus left border plus right border plus left margin plus right margin. In total element height equals to height plus top padding plus bottom padding plus top border plus bottom border plus top margin plus bottom margin. 
We will now talk about CSS properties that you can use to apply styles to the borders of any HTML element. CSS allows you to set styles for the border of any HTML element. It also provides you with a way of setting border styles for one or more sides of an element. Border style. The border style property specifies what kind of border to display. None of the border properties will have any effect unless the border style property is set. Let us look at an example to understand it. Border Width. The Border Width property is used to set the width of the border. The width is set in pixels or by using one of the three predefined values, thin, medium or thick. The Border Width property does not work if it is used alone. Use the Border Style property to set the borders first. Let us look at an example to understand it. Border Color. The Border Color property is used to set the color of the border. The color can be set by specifying a color name or specifying a RGB value or by specifying a hex value. And you can also set the border color to transparent. Let us look at an example to understand it. Border Individual Sites. In CSS, it is possible to specify different borders for different size. Please refer to the following example. Border Shorthand Property as you can see from the previous examples, there are many properties to consider when dealing with borders. However, in order to shorten the code, it is possible to specify all the individual border properties in one property. This is called a shorthand property. Let's take a look at an example. All CSS border properties. Border property sets all the border properties in one declaration. Border bottom property sets all the bottom border properties in one declaration. Border bottom color property sets the color of the bottom border. Border bottom style property sets the style of the bottom border. Border bottom width property sets the width of the bottom border. Border color property sets the color of the four borders. Border left property sets all the left border properties in one declaration. Border left color property sets the color of the left border. Border left style property sets the style of the left border. Border left width property sets the width of the left border. Border right property sets all the right border properties in one declaration. Border right color property sets the color of the right border. Border right style property sets the style of the right border. Border right width property sets the width of the right border. Border style property sets the style of the four borders. Border top property sets all the top border properties in one declaration. Border top color property sets the color of the top border. Border top style property sets the style of the top border. Border top width property sets the width of the top border. Border Width property sets the width of the four borders. CSS Margins Margins define the space around the element. 
CSS margins are specified in a similar way to borders. They can be set individually for each side or all sides at once. The top, right, bottom and left margin can be changed independently using separate properties. A shorthand margin property can also be used to change all margins at once. Possible CSS margin values. Auto. The browser calculates a margin. Length specifies a margin in pixels, points, centimeters, etc. Default value is 0 pixels. Percent specifies a margin in percent of the width of the containing element. Inherit specifies that the margin should be inherited from the parent element. Margin shorthand property. To shorten the code, you may specify all the margin properties in one property. This is called a shorthand property. The shorthand property for all the margin properties is margin. The margin property can have from 1 to 4 values. Look at the following example usage of margin shorthand property. All CSS margin properties. Margin property, a shorthand property for setting the margin properties in one declaration. Margin bottom property, sets the bottom margin of an element. Margin left property, sets the left margin of an element. Margin right property, sets the right margin of an element. Margin top property, sets the top margin of an element. CSS padding, the CSS padding properties define the space between the element border and the element content. Padding clears an area around the content of an element. The padding is affected by the background color of the element. The top, right, bottom and left padding can be changed independently using separate properties. A shorthand padding property can also be used to change all padding at once. Padding can never be a negative value. Possible padding values. Length. Length defines a fixed padding. Percent. Percent defines a padding in percent of the containing element. Padding individual sides. This property is used to specify different padding for different sides. Let's have a look at an example. Padding shorthand property. In order to shorten the code, all the padding properties are specified in one property. This is called a shorthand property. The shorthand property for all the padding properties is padding. Let's take a look at the following example. Padding values. The padding property can have from 1 to 4 values. Let's take a look at the following example usage of padding shorthand property. In this example, top padding is 25 pixels, right padding is 50 pixels, bottom padding is 75 pixels and left padding is 100 pixels. All CSS padding properties. Padding, a shorthand property for setting all the padding properties in one declaration. Padding bottom, set the bottom padding of an element. Padding left sets the left padding of an element. Padding right sets the right padding of an element. Padding top sets the top padding of an element. CSS grouping and nesting selectors. In style sheets often there are elements with the same style. In such scenarios to minimize the code you can group selectors and make sure to separate each selector with a comma. Group selectors. Let's look at an example of group selectors usage. Nesting selectors. In CSS, you can apply a style for a selector within a selector. In the example shown below, one style is specified for all P elements, one style is specified for all elements with class equals to marked, and a third style is specified only for P elements within elements with class equals to marked. CSS dimension. The CSS dimension properties allow you to control the height and width of an element. Below are 
all the CSS dimension properties along with their description and values. Following example demonstrates how to set the height of different elements. Following example demonstrates how to set the width of an element using a pixel value. Following example demonstrates how to set the maximum height of an element. Following example demonstrates how to set the maximum width of an element using a percent value. Following example demonstrates how to set the minimum height of an element. This example demonstrates how to set the minimum width of an element using a pixel value. Fifth part of our HTML module ends here. In this video, we discuss the different ways to style text of a web page using CSS and how to implement CSS into your website.